Hey the eccentric beings, this is Natasha Lund and welcome to my podcast. Woo-hoo! I want to thank all my listeners and all my new listeners out there today. And I also want to dedicate this video to my future grands and my future kids. Uh, one day when they listen to this, that they would know grandma worked hard for you guys. Mom worked hard for you guys and that I love you from the bottom of my heart. And um, yeah, so today's topic is going to be about my experience or experiences as a home health nurse. So as you guys may or may not know, um, I am currently a registered nurse um, and registered nurses or nurses period. We do a variety of things. I kind of say that nurses kind of have a little bit of everything. We're a little bit of a CNA. We're sometimes physicians. And the reason I say that, we're not, you know, board certified physicians, but sometimes physicians may ask the nurses to put in orders, a verbal order. So that's why I say sometimes we have a little bit of that role. We have like a OT, occupational therapy or PT, speech therapy roles. Um, we also have a little bit of respiratory therapy within us. So we have, uh, a lot of things that's, that's connected within the scope of a nurse. And just to give you a little background, so nurses can either be, uh, a social degree nurses where they go to school for two years and they'll get a associate degree in nursing. They can go for four years and get their bachelor's degree in nursing. And they can go even longer than that, <clears throat> excuse me, and they can get their master's or a doctor degree in nursing. So I am a associate degree in nursing, uh, associate degree nurse, excuse me. I went to school for two years and I got to tell you guys, it was one of the hardest two years that I've ever experienced. And during my course of being in nursing school, I knew it was the hand of God that was on me to help me to be able to pass um, my courses and things of that nature. And God's will, I'll be doing a video uh, about my nursing experience for you guys so you can kind of get an idea of my nursing experience and, and kind of <clears throat> where I, I came from. So, But today, uh, we're going to be talking about three experiences as a home health nurse. So as a home health nurse, pretty much what you are, you are an, a nurse. You can be an LPN, a licensed practical nurse, or you can be a registered nurse. And pretty much what we do is we take care of patients uh, in their homes. And what happens is that patients either leave like um, the hospital and they're getting discharged from the hospital and then they go into home health. So they look for home health uh, offices or to kind of work with so they can get the services continued so pretty much it's a continue, continuity of care uh, in their home. Um, and so we do things from taking, par- taking care of paraplegics or quadriplegics or quad patients. Um, that's what we call them. So usually they're paralyzed from the upper and lower limbs or they just may be paralyzed from the bottom. Um, so that's the pair. Quad means all four limbs. They can't move or have any function. Uh, but some of them can. But um, we take care of paraplegic patients. We uh, take care of pediatric patients. So a lot of your pediatric patients, you will see, you know, they have like uh, G tubes, um, gastrostomy tubes. They have trachs. They have vents. And I do want to mention, as a home health nurse, which I wasn't really aware of when I went into home health. Um, that if you're listening now, if you're inspiring to be a home health nurse, make sure that you're going at least into the hospital. This is what I would suggest, but do as you will. If you don't have any experience, so this is for like my new experience nurses. Um, I would say at least go a year or two doing like strict bedside nursing. So maybe going into like your med surge units or going to maybe step down ICU because when you come into home health, a lot of your adult patients, so depending on if you want to work with geriatrics or pediatrics, so your pediatrics are your kids and your geriatrics are like your older 
or adolescents and, and adults. So if you want to work with older adults, I would say at least go into the hospital, get a hos some hospital experience and work at least a year or two on, like I said, med surge, ICU or step down unit directly with trachs. A lot of times you are going to see trachs on your ICUs more a lot of your BiPAPs and CPAPs are going to be on your step downs ICUs, but also you're going to see it on med surge as well. And there is a difference. So people may say ventilator is pretty much a way of getting uh, the air exchange to be equal or balanced again in the body. And so um, I'll do another video about that, but pretty much people get confused. A ventilator has this two types of vents. There's a CPAP and there's a BiPAP. Um, and that's just from experience. I, I want you guys to be well equipped. So if you're thinking about that, make sure that you get that experience in the hospital first, because when you go into home health and you want to work with adult patients, a lot of your adult clients, if they're not paraplegic, then they're going to have trachs and vents. So you do want to have experience with that. You want to get all of the hands-on experience that you can. That way you're, um, you're well equipped, you know, get your experience with your Foley care, putting in a Foley. So make sure that you're getting that, those hands-on experience because when you're in home health, you have more autonomy. So you're not really, you have your clinical managers, but you're not directly be, beside another nurse. So it's not like you can call another nurse in that home. You have to call your clinical manager. So that's why I say at least get your experience. You're not going to know everything, but for a tip, you know what that's one of the main tips i would say make sure you have trach and vent experience uh before you go into home health know how to do basic nursing stuff the whole concept of home health is knowing how to do basic nursing care knowing how to change a brief knowing how to take a blood sugar knowing how to uh your know your vital signs you know and with the trachs and vents knowing how to work your oxygen tanks knowing about knowing about oxygen tanks, knowing about um, your concentrators, knowing about traits and vents, how often they're changed and, and what signs and symptoms to look out for. Um, know about G2, you know, signs of irritation, signs of, you know, <clears throat> some clients have to be deep suction. So know about orders and know when to ask for help. Okay. So those are just some other tips besides what I was going to discuss in this podcast today but back to the topic so as an ex um it's my experiences as a home health nurse is different from it's going to be different from each nurse i am an african-american black nurse so my experience is going to be different from a white nurse or a latino nurse or asian nurse so um it's going to be different for each and everybody but for my experience the first thing i experienced as a home health nurse and also a nurse just period it's just one racism um racism is very prevalent in the nursing field as you guys can look and see if you go into a hospital especially where i'm at and where i'm located the hospitals that i see i see a lot of white nurses i see a lot of white doctors and it's you know we as African Americans never really had the opportunity to become nurses. That wasn't something that we as African American women or men had the opportunity to do. Um, and you will notice too, a lot of times on your night shift. So if you're working in the hospital, a lot of times the night shift nurses are going to be African Americans. You rarely see a lot of African American nurses working day shift. And I'm not really sure of the whole backstory behind that but you would notice it's like we as african-american nurses were put in the background you know and sometimes it feels like we don't exist it sometimes feels like our voice isn't being heard um my experience particularly being as a home health nurse is that i would see you know i i'm not bragging on myself but this is through the grace of god that i have experience and i have knowledge just as any other nurse um, who is equipped to do, um, you know, a nursing profession. You know, I graduated, I got my degree, and I'm willing and, and eager to learn. And you will notice sometimes, because of the color of your skin, you're going to go into white uh, homes. You may even go into black homes, but when you go into white homes, sometimes you have, 
this spirit of unwelcomeness, if that's a word. You know, you have families who look at you like you're black because, like I said, a lot of nurses are white. So when you have a black nurse, you you know, you're black, and then it's just like you get attacked. So sometimes the family members, you do need to watch out for some of the family members because sometimes they will try to set nurses up, especially if you're black. And I'm not trying to be, I'm not racist at all, but I'm just expressing my view of what I've been through. But as a black nurse, you will uh, go into white homes and or black homes. And sometimes the family will set you up. Sometimes you'll see, sometimes the moms, we call them moms and dads. We don't really use their names until we get into the home. But, you know, sometimes the parents, you know, will treat you different, you know, whether you young or younger than the mom or for whatever reason is and you're strictly there just to do a job you know your mindset is to go in there do your job take care of your clients and go home and some it's not going to be easy you know you're going to be battling against you know family sometimes family says one thing and then what the nurse is supposed to do says something else and a lot of it i know this is about orders what nurses can and can't do as far as what orders go so but yeah you're gonna have sometimes the mom use the husband you know to to speak on her behalf and you know what i noticed too is being in home health there's a spirit of like with the men like i know like the men are being driven by the wives and the wives will use the husbands to speak what they should be speaking. You know, I, I don't agree with a man coming against a woman boastful because I've been, I experienced men coming against me in a, in a boast, boastful experience. And you're in these people's homes, so you don't go in there and disrespect people's homes. I, I never go in and disrespect a person's home. But sometimes you will notice that for whatever the reason or case may be, you know, the women, the wives will use their husbands to express things to you when they should. I don't agree with a man yelling and and fussing at a, a, a woman. That's to me, that's disrespectful. That's to me, is kind of like very feminine, like for a man to even try to, you know, talk to a woman. It's, to me, I think it's more respectful for a woman to speak against a woman. Just like if someone's, if a man and his wife was being come against or came against from another man who was talking and yelling at her the first thing you would be like why is this man talking to her like that so you would experience that you may experience you may not but i have experienced that as well and um so racism is is heavy like i said sometimes you will have family try to set you up on certain things because they they may just not like you for whatever reason and like I said you just being a black nurse that's just another factor to you just being like set apart they sometimes make you feel dumb or they try to belittle you because you know um maybe you don't have as much experience as someone else but you still can become equipped and I also noticed that you know as a nurse you still need to be getting hands-on experience and sometimes families don't want you to do certain things um and so how can they expect you to get the experience right and i noticed this before you know uh they just attack you for whatever reason and it can just be it could be a lot you know it could be a lot nursing is not easy i would tell anybody don't go into nursing thinking that you're going to make a whole bunch of money that's like one of the stereotypes I think that most people think is that, oh, I'm going to nursing, I'm going to get this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to get all this bunch of money. And it's, it's like, no, honey, you're not. <laughs> you, I mean, you can become rich doing other things, but just as a nurse, you know, you're going to have to work hard for your money. You, There's a song that says she works hard for her money. You're going to work hard for your money now. And, you know, as a nurse too and as any other profession that you may be in make sure that you're looking at you know pay rates for new grad nurses or nurses with this amount of experience so look at those rates before you just go into nursing know that it's something you have to really love it's something that you really have to just kind of put your all into it because there's gonna be days you're gonna be like what in the world why did i why did i do this you know 
what was the reason for this, Lord? Like, <laughs> and it's going to be those moments where you're going to go home, you're going to cry, you're going to go cry before you go to work. You may be crying at work if you're listening to this, but just know that you can make it through. You know, just know that you're not the only one, and it's sad to say, but you're not the only one who's going through it. And I'm here um, to encourage you guys to know that you can do it. I'm a black nurse, an African-American nurse who made it, who made it through and got her RN degree. And so I want to help you guys <clears throat> to make it, to get your R RN degree, to go further out if you want to become that, that MP or that PA or that doctor. So you have the knowledge so and the skills to do it. Secondly, I'll say my experience as um, a home health nurse, I would say there's a lot of jealousy. Um, sometimes in the nursing field, we say that the, um, the older nurses, I think it goes something like they eat their youngs. So there's a lot of uh, almost jealousy i don't you know i assume it may be jealousy or a fear or doubt i don't know what it is but you know it's like when you become when you're a newer nurse um you're gonna have that experience you know you may know something that the older nurse may not even know that could help them but because of your age or because of who you are they just don't want to receive the information from you and so you have to get into the habit of not receiving the information you have to get into the habit of okay um you know i got a i got a job i got to do what to do and my job and duty is to take care of my clients and so you you want to be the advocate for your clients you want to be the advocate no matter what anybody says you want to make sure that god gives you ask god to give you the spirit of discernment you know that you can see different things you and the thing about it is God gives you if you ask God to give you discernment he's going to give you discernment you're going to notice people's expressions so look at people's expression look at their body tones um watch the words that they say because you just know in your in your spirit that something ain't right you just know sometimes you're not going to be able to stay in those people's homes you you may go and do a meet and greet and from that meet and greet, if your if your spirit is telling you something's not right or you don't need to come back here, don't go back. But if you go to that meet and greet and you just you really can't tell or discern about that person or people or that family, then you know I would say go. And then if you you start seeing signs, because I don't want you to feel threatened or and like they're running you away, because some will try to run you away. But stay in your ground. Stay in your ground. And third, I would say um, intimidation. There's a lot of like clicks with nursing. There's you're gonna see if you are a nurse listening to this, you will see sometimes there's clicks. There's um, this is what I noticed. There's a lot of white clicks. So you have your your white nurses. Sometimes you have your um, you have white nurses, and you have the white nurses are friends with like the the floor the um the nurse manager or you know or the director of nursing and you know if you're a new african-american nurse and you're going to train you know sometimes you're a preceptor too because that's something i want you guys to look into sometimes if people may feel threatened for whatever reason you know your preceptor may withhold things from you that they because your preceptor is one who's going to train you either they have at least two years of plus experience or they might even have 20 or 30 years plus experience but i notice sometimes two your preceptors i had mostly um i have had some black and um white preceptors but sometimes the white preceptors they kind of hold information back from you and they kind of just sometimes you feel very secluded you know it's like they sit around they sit on at the nurse's desk and they talk and gossip and it's like when you go to ask a question they kind of you know just make you feel belittled like why are you asking me this you know and they just make you feel real stupid they just give you these weird looks like you're dumb and you're not dumb you're not dumb for asking questions you're not dumb for wanting to know why something is like this or if you want to question something because you feel in your heart that it's not right 
you have a right to say no. You have a right to question things. And so you should never feel bad when you, as the nurse, because you went to school to do this, you should never feel bad for wanting to know more, for wanting to be the best nurse that you can be. You know, whether you're in home health, whether you're in a hospital, whether you're in a nursing home, whether you're in a, like a rehab center, you sh- as a nurse should never feel bad. And this this goes for any but anyone. You should never feel bad for wanting to ask questions, wanting to know more, wanting to just gain more knowledge. And <clears throat> like I said, these were my experiences. One of my top three experiences um, with being in home health. But um, yeah, I just want you guys to be aware before you go into home health. Do something that you love to do. Ask God before you go into it because two years could be a, a very, two years, four years, eight years, however long that you go could be a long time that you, you just don't, you know, really like what you're doing or love what you're doing. So you can love your patients, but do you love what you actually went into? And I also want to say as a nurse, make sure that you have these characteristics. Make sure you have patience with your your patients or your clients make sure you are kind make sure you are loving make sure that you are trying to assist them in every need possible and i didn't want to make this video just about white people because i have seen uh black people who are very rude and 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 so and just act like they don't want to be there sometimes you're going to find nurses that just don't want to be there they just don't want to be at their job they're aggravated they're stressed and yes there is a, nur- a nursing shortage but there's no excuse to you still you know being able to take care of your patients and, and having that love and, and and patience and 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 warmth because people can feel that people can feel when you like them people can feel when you you don't like them people can sense that stuff even down to the children i noticed that the young children can even sense when someone loves them, when someone cares about them, when someone is is kind to them. Kids can notice that. So imagine what adults can imagine. Or you know, so just keep those things in mind. This is not a a, a podcast to discourage you, but I'm here to encourage you. Know that you can do it. I'm not telling you that it's easy, but you can do it. Don't do it for the money. Do it because you love what you do. Do it because you you want to see your patients heal. You want to see your patients deliver. You want to see your patients feel loved and feel like, you know, they're appreciated. Because when we're in, as a nurse or anybody, we're here to serve them. We're here to make sure that they have the best experience in the hospital. Because sometimes they don't even have family that come and visit them. I and mean, you guys, if you have family members in the hospital, please... Please go and visit your family. Don't just throw them up in a nursing home. I've seen this, you know, families just throw their family members in a nursing home and don't come back and visit them. Don't call them. Don't see how they're doing. Don't do that. Have love. Have compassion for your family. I don't care what your family been through, but have compassion because, you know, like I said, there are some rude people. There are some disrespectful people there are some hateful people out there so make sure that you have love for your family if your family is staying in the hospital overnight make sure that there's someone there with your family member someone to advocate for your family member to speak up for them just to have an open eye just to see things so that they may not even notice so speak up be bold be confident be encouraged hold your head up now when you go into that those homes know that you are a nurse and you are capable of doing what you are doing you are capable of being a nurse you went to nursing school you graduated or some of you may be thinking about going to nursing school you are capable of doing it but just be encouraged be encouraged and don't give up don't allow people to push you around to make you feel belittled or anything hold on And ask God to lead you and guide your steps, you guys. So, I just wanted to drop that tidbit on here. I didn't think I was going to be on here this long. But, of course, I love talking to you guys. So, um, and also remember, check out um, my YouTube channel as well. 
You can also catch some videos on there. Uh, I will be discussing nursing. And then if you will, you know, feel free to post comments on things that you may want me to talk about that would help you. Um, like I said, this channel is going to be about empowering, you know, women or men, whoever's listening to do better, to live a better life. So, uh, also check out my YouTube is in the description and remember you guys that God loves you. Remember the essential beings. We are here to do what? That's right. We are here to knock down the kingdom of darkness. All right, you guys, I love you. Catch you in the next podcast.